Hi, this is your host Swapnil Bharatiya and welcome to TFI Insights, a show where we deep dive into emerging technologies. JFrog recently announced that its DevOps platform tools, JFrog Artifactory and JFrog X-Ray are now available with native deployment templates for customers who are running either on AWS, GovCloud or Azure Government Cloud. To deep dive into this announcement, we have with us today Casey Omara, Vice President of Business Development and Global Alliance at JFrog. Casey, first of all, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here. Thank you very much. So let's get started with this announcement. Talk about um, what's going on there. Yeah, so we're really excited uh, to launch our uh, government uh, templates for both AWS GovCloud and for the Azure GovCloud uh, for customers today to enjoy with both Artifactory and X-Ray. Uh, we're able to launch those now in AWS GovCloud East and West, and also on Azure GovCloud in Texas, Arizona, and in Virginia. So we're really excited about this opportunity for our customers. It's been something they've been asking for, and we're very happy to, to be able to deliver that to them today. Just for our viewers quickly, uh, they, uh, they are aware of it, but I just want to reiterate. Can you talk about quickly what is JFrog Artifactory and what is JFrog X-Ray? JFrog Artifactory is a uh, binary repository. So what that means is you're able to build your uh, you're able to build your packages and deploy them uh, into Artifactory. So you can take your source code, uh, build those packages. We do over 26 different package types, and you're able to then uh, deploy those into Artifactory. From there, we're able to scan those with X-Ray. So X-Ray is our DevSecOps uh, scanning tool where you're able to then uh, scan for vulnerabilities. Uh, you're able to implement policy control. And then from there, you can deploy those. So we have a, a number of things in our platform that, uh, that we can do that with across, uh, across our, our uh, portfolio. So we've got things like distribution, we've got pipelines uh, all the way through to the edge uh, that you can utilize with JFrog Artifactory. And when you are looking at, uh, when you're talking about government, are you talking about any special branch, specific branch? Is, is it federal government, state level? Are we talking about DOD? Who are you looking at? So in this one, it's, it's government and regulated uh, industries. So we have a lot of customers that would like to deploy into those regions. Uh, some of those uh, are from those regulated industries. Some of those are customers who are just looking to secure their IP and put them in a more secure location. So in those government clouds, uh, obviously they have the heightened uh, regulations to be in there. And so now you're able to take Artifactory and X-Ray and deploy uh, into those using uh, BYOL or bring your own license. And you're able to apply that and run those workloads uh, in those regulated places. Can you just uh, give us a glimpse of how different or unique are the requirement, how stringent they are when it comes to either the regulated uh, sectors or government agencies as compared to regular private sector, though even they are worried about security and all those things, but the situation is a bit different. Yeah, so regulated industries, and, and of course, in those government instances, there's a lot of requirements placed on the clouds uh, to make sure that you meet their, their stringent requirements to, to deploy into those regions. Um, they obviously have the infrastructure uh, that can support those. They have the networking that can support that. And now Artifactory uh, can be a part of that and you can deploy it into there. So this is a huge milestone uh, for JFrog. And, and again, inside of, of those clouds, they are making sure that you have you know, the, the uh, 127.001, they've got the FIPS, uh, they've got all of the security encryption and things that you need on the cloud uh, to make sure that they're regulated and, and can work in the government uh, entities and in regulated industries. If I'm not wrong, DOD, they have something called Platform One and they also have something called Iron Bank where they have their own repository, which is like hardened and you know they are the only repository that you can use. Because if you look at Artifactory and you folks also work with Docker, so it's, it's a place where images are placed. So do you have any interaction whatsoever with either Platform One or Iron Bank or that's totally disconnected or there is some influence there as well? There's some influence. That's a, that's a separate process um, over with the, the DOD, the, the, the DCAR process that goes into Platform One. Um, we've put our image into that, that DCAR process uh, there's some other regulations and, and things that we're currently overcoming, but in in the future, our plan is to be there for Iron Bank, Party Bus, and, and all of those kind of regulated uh, ones, but you have to go through a vetting process with them as well. 
and and jfrog is uh, is in that process currently uh, i think one or two days ago uh, dod one again uh, they are stressing more on zero trust uh, when you look at devsecops there we can look at it from two uh, aspects one of is that if you look at i mean federal government the scale that they operate no, nobody operates at that scale especially if you look at dod and all those are so sometimes the kind of they set precedent how security should be done then you also look at cases like you know uh, that we saw a few uh, weeks or months ago without naming any company uh, then that also happens so so t- talk about uh, the how the government sector, public sector, or regulatory agencies are looking at DevSecOps. Are they in a phase where they are the ones who influence the rest of the industry, or they are the ones who are trying to catch up with the industry? So let's talk about the role DevOps is playing in that space. Absolutely. I think, you know, you saw from President Biden uh, just, uh, I think it was either uh, the end of last week, or it could have even been, uh, I, I believe it was even this morning, he mentioned it again where they're looking at all the government contracts and they're really looking at security. Uh, They're looking to go and and revamp their DevSecOps uh, kind of control after that incident and after they've seen a number of things. So uh, you see the government definitely doubling down on uh, DevSecOps and how they can scan and looking at vulnerabilities and things like that. I think the second thing you're gonna see uh, out of the government, and I was back in DC um, before the pandemic, and they were looking at the the S bomb or the uh, kind of the supplier uh, bill of materials uh, for how they can positively control all of the open source, where it's changed hands, who's doing it, uh, making sure that it's scanned secure in a, a virtual repository that they can use, uh, so that they're not bringing in anything uh, that would have any vulnerabilities or outside. Um, outside influence, like let's say you're taking a dependency that's taking a dependency on something else, they have positive control all the way through uh, the entire process so that you know where it came from. And they're looking to also set the standard on this. So there's a number of companies in the DevOps community uh, that are contributing to this, uh, JFrog being a a part of that, that is looking to to set that standard and make sure that there's positive control on artifacts and and things coming in for your, your your supply chain essentially for, for DevOps, your DevOps pipeline has been secured. So there's a number of things that the government are doing and uh, we're, we're happy to be a part of that and, and taking place in, in those conversations. JFrog, uh, you, know, you folks also do a lot of open source. So you touch a wide, you know, a unique spectrum of customer Like you have, you know, really highly sophisticated customers or users, you know, when you talk about these kinds of agencies and you also have, you know, those who are just embarking on their digital transformation or cloud native journey. And so when we look at security, of course, I'm not talking about the six sophisticated users, but how, what kind of trends you see uh, where security is still an afterthought or security is something which is becoming a, a part of developers pipeline getting into CI, CD. So talk about what are you seeing in this space when it comes to security, DevSecOps, zero to, uh, trust. We are also uh, hearing a lot about SREs these days when that's also becoming critical piece of the pipeline. Yeah, so the conversation ha- has definitely changed to your point. I think you know we we started off talking with a, a lot of developers and you know and and how you build your pipeline and securing your pipeline. What I, what I find a lot more is is that CISOs and and security groups are coming in as part of that conversation of building out that pipeline and making sure that you know they're they're able to scan those binaries and scan that open source uh, code as it comes through as part of kind of building and deploying. So no longer is it being coming an afterthought. It's it's something that is definitely a part of the conversation, is part of the consideration when you're looking to build your DevOps pipeline. So in, in many cases, that conversation is becoming something that's even more forward uh, as part of what they're thinking than an afterthought. Um, and I think the, the incident that you were highlighting earlier um, is definitely also pushing that conversation to a new level um, that we haven't seen before. And so X-Ray with, with Artifactory is definitely getting a lot more uh, attention in the DevSecOps community and as a way to do this, not only in existing customers, but we have a lot of new customers coming as well uh, that are looking for that type, of, um, that type of software that can just build right into their chain and become, you know, with, with Artifactory being the, the database of DevOps, that X-ray just becomes a natural extension in making sure that they're deploying secure code. Right, uh, rising tide lifts all boats. So if you look at this uh, this particular announcement, how it will also influence 
um, the rest of uh, JFrog, not only offering, but you know how JFrog builds or offers solutions, or you know, uh, yeah, basically just to understand what influence it will have in your longer strategy and roadmap. Yeah, obviously this is this is the first stage. You mentioned a couple other places that uh, that JFrog is looking to go in in the future. Um, but this is this is a natural kind of first step that customers have been asking for. Um, you know, we, not only in in regulated industries, but people who want to secure their IP and have that extra layer of security have been asking uh, for this. And then, of course, going uh, e even more than this, we've had customers saying, you know, we'd we'd like you to go to go further. Um, and obviously, JFrog is is taking this seriously. We are uh, looking at at becoming closer with. Uh, some of those same party bus and with the uh, with the DCAR, with the Iron Bank, with all of those processes uh, that the government requires to be uh, more secure. Uh, one use case uh, or one market, emerging market that uh, I am interested in is edge computing. Edge is not about IoT devices. We are talking about edge data centers, and that is also a space where you, we will see a lot of explosion not in federal government. You know where they will try to. As we are working remotely, they would try to bring workload closer to your users and edge data centers enable that. So from JFrog's perspective, how do you see edge? Because security will be a big challenge there. A lot of, even if they're leveraging AI ML, they would like to do a lot of processing there instead of sending everything to the cloud. Yeah, you were, we're seeing this a lot. And, and going back to kind of the JFrog platform, uh, the edge is something that, that we've made a part of our platform as well. So if you're going from Artifactory and you're scanning with X-Ray, uh, then we have uh, our distribution engine, which then deploys to edges. And edges are kind of a, a smaller Artifactory. They're, they're kind of read-write uh, that you're able to push to to get out of those data centers and get closer to your users. So in cases where you need lower latency, in cases where uh, you want to take a, a single package and you want to push it out to developers around the world, let's say you have some developers in EMEA, some developers in APAC, uh, some here in the US, and you want to push those packages to different places, you're able to, to use those edges to get closer to those users, to, to have them to deploy and, and decrease that time uh, to, to get those to your end users. So if you're thinking like mobile devices, you're thinking you know automotive, you're thinking banking, you're thinking all those different verticals that you have, uh, you're able to utilize that edge. And then with some of the uh, technologies that you see from some of our partners, they're utilizing some of that AI ML, uh, some of that processing on the edge and the ability to, to get monitoring closer to, to where they are. So we're seeing that use case a lot and it's really driving our enterprise plus and our full platform uh, from end to end. So sticking with kind of Artifactory that's been here for 12 years, and then scanning with X-ray all the way to the edge, we have you covered with the platform to be able to support those workloads and support that uh, support that workflow uh, for our users. Perfect. Casey, thank you so much for uh, not only talking about this uh, announcement, but also we uh, deep dive into you know the, the challenges that we're facing in regulated industries, uh, public sector, which is much more challenging than the private industry. We also touch about edge use case, which I am uh, think, uh, which I am sure is going to be a really, really interesting you know place to watch. Uh, so thank for your time today, and I look forward to talk to you again. Thank you. Thank you, and appreciate you having me on the show.